What is going on, everybody? It's Alex coming back to another video, and today, uh, it's gonna be a really late ass video. I was actually searching for apartments today, so my entire day was completely fucked. So I wanted to give you guys some good content, but I mean, the third round is still gonna be holding on for the mock draft. So hopefully, you guys do enjoy this. It's a little bit long overdue, just like my video is today. Uh, we're looking at Tog McShay's two round mock, so we're gonna fly through this one pretty quick, but on the picks and slash trades that I think really need some emphasis, we'll have some emphasis. So let's kick it off, guys. If you guys are new, of course, hit the subscribe button. We are still trying to churn out towards 3K. That's the goal. So let's make it happen, all right? So starting off with the number one pig, I mean, Jaguars game, Trevor Lawrence. For the sake of time, we're not going to talk about it. It's a guarantee. Same thing with Zach Wilson at number two. Getting rid of Sam Darnold, this pretty much secures Zach Wilson as that number two quarterback. Uh, again, if if – teams knew that the jets were probably going to go justin fields then the eagles would have traded the three so again the fact that the eagles traded out meant that zach wilson was going to be number two uh niners getting mac jones uh okay we're going to talk about this one again because you guys don't understand uh well a lot of you guys do but some people still want to jump on mac jones's hoo-ha and basically say that he's the next coming of jesus he's not Okay, he is pretty much everybody's quarterback five, and it's not even close. The idea is that Shanahan is going to give up his entire future for a pretty much same exact version of what he's been working with, who has not won him a Super Bowl, doesn't really make sense. Like, why would you continue if you're just getting Jimmy G again? And honestly, I think Jimmy G is better than Mac Jones. That's going to be my – like, I think Mac Jones can improve to be Jimmy G, but ball placement, I'm going to be honest. I watch every throw. The ball placement, not good. I'm sorry. If you have five yards of separation with Devontae Smith and Jalen Waddell and they have to come back to make a jump catch, like a contested catch, that's not called good ball placement. On his highlights on NFL, like on uh, Get Up, when they're talking about him, the literally the ball is placed back here. That's a swat or an interception in the NFL. I'm sorry. Not every quarterback's going to be perfect. None of them are going to be perfect. But damn, people just try to ride this dude for saying how great his accuracy is, and it is not there. I mean, I did a report on him, gave him a late first, and I tried to give him the best chance possible. He reads the field pretty damn well. I will give him that. And he's not ass. It's just compared to what people say he is, he is ass. So, uh, again, just I really do not like this idea. Like, people, like, again, I think that uh, some people on GetUp bring up some very good points. Shannon's been, has gotten his ass whooped by Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Russell Wilson every single time. And like, it seems to be a little too consistent that he's getting beaten by the guys who are actually trying to win the big games. And I think it's time that he'll change it. Is that Trey Lance? Don't think so. I think it's Justin Fields personally, but I mean, man, I did. This is just like, he's, it just doesn't make any sense. Why give up your entire future for the same shit you've been working with? It really just doesn't make any sense. I'm sorry. You're not going to be like, you're saving 20 something million a year. If you get Mac Jones, but you won't because you're going to have him actually sitting behind Jimmy G. To me, it just doesn't make any sense. And I think this is just the ESPN narrative. It's going to happen every time. Like, it's just stupid. It's the ESPN narrative. And I don't think people are seeing through that enough. Number four, Falcons. I think they're trading out, but they're probably going to, they get pits in this situation. Perfectly fine with that. You know, again, Matt Ryan's recon, uh, restructure makes it damn near impossible to play a backup quarterback until year three of his contract. And I'm not really down for that. Year two. I'll, 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 I'll bow down to it, but whatever. Number five, the Bengals going Jamar. Again, if, if Kyle Pitts is off the board, genuinely, I don't think Jamar is the right answer here. I mean, he's going to be an amazing wide receiver. So this is where I'm going to be excited to see round two finally. But uh, I really don't think Jamar Chase is going to be uh, this pick. If he is, then, I mean, the Dolphins should be clamoring because they're going to get a generational tackle in Penny Sewell. But instead, McShay gives a 160 pound player at, to the dolphins at number six. So I, I absolutely hate this pick. If this is the second first round pick, sure. But I'm pretty, there's a heavy consensus in the NFL that Devonte Smith is not going to be a top 10 pick. He might not even be a top 15 pick. The guy played at 160 pounds the entire year. Yes. I do know that for a fact. And that's why he didn't weigh in at the, uh, at the pro day, not pro day. Uh, he didn't weigh in at mobile at um, I'm bugging at the senior bowl. He didn't weigh in because he was 160 pounds, 163 pounds, if I'm not mistaken. So, I mean, there's, there's a reason for it. He's scared to show how he actually plays. And that's, I mean, that's scary as shit guys. Uh, number seven, Detroit. They went Jalen. That's fine with me. Jalen Waddle's there. Perfectly fine. Obviously I'd want Sewell there, 
But, you know, Jalen Waddle is an excellent weapon for this team, and it's exactly what they'd be looking for. Carolina Panthers getting Sertan. Again, when you have the best tackles on the board, I don't think you go corner. They just got A.J. Boye, but this is before the fact. So this is unfortunately the problem with going a couple of days late, but I still think it's kind of baloney. Uh, even then, when you have all those guys, you, you take that route. Broncos getting Trey Lance. You know, I, I'm perfectly fine with it. You know, you do take a shot. Again, He's it's probably not going to work out because you don't really throw a raw quarterback in day one. But Justin Fields is here. I would have taken him 10 out of 10 times. But Trey Lance is, uh, he's definitely a really good talent. And I think that the Broncos could definitely use him in a much better way than they use Drew Locke, who, again, Drew Locke, I, there, I hope to God there's no Drew Locke truthers out there because I used to be one. I, I thought he was a late first and, you know, he went early second. I was like, that's a great pick. It was a great pick. You take a shot on a quarterback who has potential. I'm perfectly fine with that. Take a shot on a guy who the NFL thinks there's four guys worth the number one overall pick. Trey Lance could be one of them and probably is. Mac Jones is the one name that is probably not on that list. And I don't get why people like him so much. Dallas Cowboys go JC Horn. Perfect fit. Like it. Of course, if Penny Sewell's there, Rashawn Slater, I'd consider them. But um, JC Horn or Sewell would be the only only options there. Now, the Patriots move up for Justin Fields. I like the fit. Good fit right there. Wouldn't mind it at all. Number 12, the Eagles go Parsons. Uh, I, I just don't think they're going to, given their draft philosophy. But I wouldn't mind it because, again, they could use some extra youth in that linebacking core, some extra talent. I know they did just bring in somebody, and I think this was made before the fact. And I believe it was Eric Wilson from the Vikings. I think he replaced Anthony Barr and played actually really well. So, I mean, that's a really good signing, but I don't think that that's going to be the panacea, the cure-all to this defense that has been pretty damn atrocious. Uh, the Chargers going Penny Sewell. Wouldn't that be a dream, huh? Wouldn't that be a dream? And the Vikings going Rashawn Slater. Again, wouldn't that be a dream? So it leaves the Giants getting JOK. I don't think they really need this. Um, JOK is really good versatile linebacker. I just don't believe that he's going to fit this defense properly. Genuinely, I mean, I think he'll be a slot corner slash safety. I think he'll be the rover that he was back in Notre Dame. And I don't think that two of those roles are immediately filled. Safety, pretty damn fine with Jabril Peppers. Obviously, it's I don't believe that he is like a guaranteed guy where you don't take anybody ever. Like it's not somebody who's so good that you'll never ever get depth or something. But slot corner Darnay Holmes got him last year and he's playing really damn well. So getting JOK, I, I just don't I get the idea why you call him an inside linebacker either at 220 pounds. He can play it, but it's just it's it's a little bit fringy on that type of idea. And the Dolphins move up for ABT. Again, I don't get why you're getting a guard when the one position on this entire team that's pretty much filled is the amount of guards that you have. You have Robert Hunt, who's playing tackle, who should probably play a guard. You have Solomon Kinley. I believe you still have Eric Flowers. I think there's a couple other guys on that team too. So I'm a little bit sketched out about that. You know, you could have went a center here. If you went Landon Dickerson at this spot, it would have been crazy, but I wouldn't care too much because, you know, I don't think Matt Skura is really going to be that great of an option. So don't really get it. Uh, number 17, Vegas Raiders get Trevon Merrick. I think they do need a safety. I just don't think this is the right spot for it. Again, I think they need a single high safety, so I would probably rock either with a slot corner safety to play that slot corner role or else go a single high like a Jamar Johnson. Oh, I love that dude. So right tackle, glaring need there. I still think that they should go right tackle or get a blitzing linebacker, which, of course, at this spot, I mean, they could go Jameen Davis. I mean, hmm, that'd be quite fun. Number 18, the Cardinals going Caleb Farley. Uh, I mean, I guess they, they don't need to get a corner i know they need to get one they don't need him to be completely healthy like this is something that potentially they can uh they can afford to lose because they do still have i believe robert alford so they do have at least a starting three that is mediocre but if you add in caleb farley and he's healthy this could be one of the best so maybe it's worth taking a shot on them i just think that i'm pretty sure the nfl knows that uh greg newsom's gonna go before farley given his injuries but i think everybody knows caleb farley is most talented Washington football team getting Christian Darsaw. Yeah, y'all already know exactly how how much of a stupid, stupid decision that is. I mean, both of the tackles are 29. Excuse me, Morgan Moses literally turned 30 like a week ago. So you have guys who, A, Cornelius Lucas is probably about 26 with his body age because he hasn't even been playing. And then Morgan Moses has, I mean, he'll be perfectly fine. He's there for a couple more years. Do not understand why you need to get Christian Darsaw here. If you want to get a Tevin Jenkins and move him into guard and realize that Scherf isn't your answer, good. 
Okay, or else you want to get rid of Schweitzer, who has been playing pretty well. I, I just don't get this pick whatsoever. I think it's a really big oversight. And again, it's just part of like, I, I don't really know what goes through Todd's mind because he is a genius. I just don't see the genius coming out this year. And I don't know. I don't know why. The Bears getting Kadarius Tony. I think we just saw this the other day with the Peter Schragers. Oh, that might have been yesterday, actually. Uh, and why are you replacing Allen Robinson with a guy who's not a number one? Kadarius Tony could be a. Uh, like a number one weapon on a team, but he will never be a number one wide receiver. Number one wide receivers need to be a guy who scares the shit out of a number one corner. Like Tyree Kill is the only guy probably at this frame that can really scare the shit out of a number one boundary corner. And Kadarius Tony's not that. Kadarius Tony's an excellent player with the ball in his hands, and he's he's pretty damn good. Has drop concerns, but I mean he's definitely different. I just don't get it. You still have guys who can perfectly replace Allen Robinson and, of course, Rashad Bateman. If you want to move back, I know some guys are low on Rashad Bateman. I'm not that high on Rashad Bateman. I still think that in the right scheme, he has an insane impact, but I need to watch some more of him because I was initially not very high on Rashad Bateman, and I've let my it, the influences of the outside world probably push him up a little bit more than I should, probably should have. But Kadarius Tony, I, I have him in like the top 25. This is just not the fit. If you wanted to do him, uh, put him here with Washington and just say, you know, Adam Humphreys is going to be a guy who's a depth dude. He doesn't even stay healthy anyways. We're going to get Kadarius. Okay. But apart from that, don't get it. Really don't get it. Number 21, the Colts getting Quiddy Pay. You do. You have literally lost your star left tackle, uh, Anthony Costanzo, and you replaced him with like Sam Tevy. And you still have some of the best tackles on the board. I seriously doubt that this is the pick, and I love me some Quiddy Pay. Love me some Quiddy Pay. Let's see what he does in round two, though, because that might be able to uh, change our opinion on this a little bit. Number 22, the Titans get Greg Newsome. Absolutely agree with that. 100% agree with that. That's a really good pick right there. Jets getting Travis Etienne. Don't think you need you really need to right here. I uh, just don't really think that that's much of a, a need at this moment. You still have big-ass holes at guard. And did ABT get selected yet? Because if not, then he better be that damn pick. He well, he did get selected. Okay. So, obviously, um, there's some options that have been taken off the board, but I would probably go – I wouldn't go Tevin Jenkins unless you want to put him at a guard, which, honestly, that might be a really good spot because I think Jonathan Ogden started out as a guard and then moved to tackle. Obviously, Tevin Jenkins, not Jonathan Ogden, but – uh, I seriously think that he'll have a really damn good career. So I, I don't think that taking a running back round one is the priority for the Jets, especially when you have other issues like an offensive line. Just, I, I don't really get it. And I'm a guy who I used to take Travis Etienne at the top of the second. So uh, that's coming from a guy who would take Etienne to the Jets. Steelers getting Najee again. Got to see what the hell is going on in the later rounds. But Tevin Jenkins is there and you – you have to. I don't care. Like We have to develop the run game, but we've seen third round, fifth round running backs like Aaron Jones be able to make a big impact. And the Steelers haven't really found that. But to be honest, I just think that if there's a guy like Tevin on the board, if he's not on the board, great pick. But Tevin's on the board, you take Tevin. All like There's no doubt in my mind, you take Tevin. Uh, Jaguars getting Tevin Jenkins. I don't think he's actually a good tackle for Trevor Lawrence, who's more uh, mobile. Like, I love Tevin, and he moves pretty damn well for a man of his size, but he's still clunky with his movement, and he needs to develop that. He's going to be very good with a quarterback who's more stationary. And then if he moves to guard, then he'll be excellent. He'll be a Hall of Famer, in my opinion. But Tevin Jenkins has a lot of potential. I just don't think it it's really maximized with a mobile quarterback. I think that Tevin will be moving too much, and that will open up his weaknesses that we, we have seen, obviously, at Oklahoma State, because we've seen – his highs, but also he's highlighted some lows. Browns game Russo. I, I don't know if it still happens here, um, but I, I I'm perfectly fine with this fit. You and you know me. I like Gregory Russo to the Browns, but I don't know after the test numbers. I just don't see the physical potential because I haven't seen the play potential either. That's just something that's a little bit worrisome to me. Ravens game Terrace Marshall. I like it. It's, it's a spread scheme. Uh, it's a vertical scheme, and you kind of that, that's a good fit. Uh, Saints getting Elijah Moore. Don't think you really need to go after a slot weapon. I think you kind of need to get number two, but Elijah Moore is really damn good. Again, you guys also need a linebacker uh, and then probably a corner. This team's starting to fall apart, and it's a little bit scary, and it's kind of embarrassing. So all, all prayers up for him. Packers getting Jameen Davis. I think that that's honestly the number one target now in the first round. If you get Jameen Davis, four three seven speed is unreal. And then he also set the records, and I believe um, – the explosiveness test, and I believe 
uh, vertical as well as like three cone or something. He's absolutely amazing. Jalen Phillips to the Bills, really damn solid pick. You know, I again, this is a team that's trying to win right now. And Jalen Phillips, I have him as an early second given his concussions, right? But uh, this is a team where you can reach and potentially lose a player in one to two years because of these concussion things, but it might put a ring or two on your finger. Jalen Phillips is uh, best pass rushing talent in this class. And I'm happy that McShay is actually valued that into here. Finally, we're seeing some more genius come out. Chiefs getting Aziz Ojolari. I'm sorry, you really do need to get a tackle. And almost all of the tackles are left on the board. So I, as much as I like Aziz, I'm just going to say sometimes the, we, we've seen why the offensive line matters. That's all I'll say. And the Bucks getting Zabin Collins, they're just playing with house money, man. That's getting an excellent player. That's unrealistic. And they're saying that he'll replace JPP. I don't believe that one Who, when JPP is 278 pounds or something like that. And Zayvon Collins is like 260. But, I mean, you guys can do whatever the hell you want. Zayvon Collins is a beast. And I think that he'll just work. I think he can work as a middle linebacker really well. And especially when you see Levante David leave, if he sheds some pounds and maybe he's around 250 and is a little bit more uh, mobile, he could be an easy replacement for Levante David because he's excellent in coverage. In round two, Jaguar is getting 2-2 two, two at well. If this was round seven, maybe I'd respect that. No. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I don't. I cannot see Mr. Lightning in a bottle who literally can't break a tackle on the move. It just it doesn't happen for me. And also Mr. Butterfingers, literally worst hands in the draft. 34, Jets getting Eichenberg. All right, now you won me on that one. So Eichenberg probably would have been a pick of mine earlier, but... I still would have honestly said go Tevin Jenkins and just have two absolute monstrosities. And I, I guess that it's a little bit bugging to me. Falcons gain Javante. Uh, I, Mike Davis is kind of your power RBVC if you want that. So I don't really know why you need to get Javante now. But I mean, Javante is an amazing weapon. I know that Arthur Smith likes his running game. So you, you guys make what you want of that. Dolphins getting Ronnie Perkins. You know, uh, I, I don't think he'll ever go that high. Didn't even test that well. So, as much as a fan I am, as uh, as much of a fan I am of Ronnie Perkins, I seriously don't think he's worth that pick. Eagles getting Rashad Bateman wouldn't that be a dream, huh? Uh, Bengals getting Jalen Mayfield. You can kick him into guard. Honestly, that's his only position given his short ass arms. But you know, Jalen Mayfield has a lot of potential. Thirty nine Panthers getting Joe Tryon. I literally just released my report a couple hours ago. Follow me on Twitter if you guys want to see uh, all my reports and stuff. And he's an absolute, he's a beast. I can see why teams would want to take him. But again, I don't think edge is really a concern for the Panthers, especially when you have really high end tackle talents on the board. Broncos going ASJ. Uh, that's, that's a pretty good one. Cause Kyle Fuller is there only for a year. So uh, I think that ASJ can learn and he has a dog mentality. Again, I think that there are some good linebackers left on the board, like Nick Bolton to the uh, Detroit lions where I'm perfectly happy uh, with this one. I like this pick especially given the fact that, you know, Detroit lost Jared Davis. I think this would be an excellent pickup for them. Number 42, the Giants game boogie. Uh, if, uh, cool. I, I just don't really, uh, I don't really know why you go boogie, but I mean, do the boogie. <laughs> I, I don't know. I just, I, I seriously don't think that that was the right move. I think that there's other ways you could have went. There's also guards. You could have went a Wyatt Davis to plug in at that right guard spot. And just a little bit, a little bit weird for me. You could even go a Creed Humphrey for a center slash guard prospect. Don't really like this one at all. Also Quinn Minerts. There you go. So he does at least see something. Uh, Niners getting Calvin Joseph. I will literally puke on the ground live for you guys. If that happens, that's ridiculous. I hate Calvin Joseph for what people think of him. I still have him as like a late third. It's just, it's disgusting that people even want to think about him in the mid second to early for it. I am uh, to early second and even late first. I just don't see what you guys like about this. It's I'm sorry. It, like it's going to be another Lonnie Johnson pick. I just don't get it. Uh, Dallas Cowboys game Barmore. Wouldn't that be a dream? I think he's actually going to be uh, taken in the first, but of course with McShay pulling some random crap uh, for ESPN, he falls to this far. Of course he does. He does that for me as well, but I just think that uh, the draft could have fallen much differently. Jacksonville going Pat Fryermuth. I'm very happy that's at this pick. Uh, that's that's probably the best pick he's ever done for the Jacksonville Jaguars besides Trevor Lawrence. Uh, Patriots getting Elijah. I I don't like the idea that you're getting Elijah as a slot corner right now because you have Jalen Mills, who can be a pretty damn talented slot corner slash safety hybrid. So 
I, I don't I don't really get that one personally. And then I think there's really good boundary corners still left on the board. So I, I just don't really get it. I love Elijah Molden. I have him as a first round prospect, but it's just weird. I, I don't like it. Uh, Ram, not Rams. Chargers getting Creed Humphrey to be the guard. So I mean, I'm pretty I'm pretty fine with that. So that's pretty solid. I, I think that Creed Humphrey. You know me. I have him as a third round guard, six round center. Cannot stand his IQ, but that'd be pretty talented. Uh, but of course, I would probably go with Wyatt Davis there, or maybe a different guard uh, like a Trey Smith. But I, I don't know. I don't know. You guys can tell me about that one. Raiders getting Samuel Cosme. Wouldn't that be a dream, huh? Wouldn't that be a dream? Love that. Arizona Cardinals getting Rondale Moore. That's a really explosive weapon that they need, but I don't think uh, you have now two slot weapons right here. I don't really get that at all. It's a little bit weird for me. I'm going to be honest. It's a little bit weird for me. 50, the Dolphins getting Jabril Cox. I mean, okay, cool. Uh, it's Jabril Cox is kind of just an underwhelming prospect. I'm going to be doing a scout report on him very soon, but you know, I, I don't know. It's, it's okay. Uh, I don't like the idea that you can say that you're going to replace Van Noy, who's an excellent pass rusher. So I, I it's kind of weird. I don't really understand why you'd put that in there. Washington getting Kellen Mond honestly wouldn't mind it too much until the fact that they have Taylor Heineke for two years. And, you know, you can take a quarterback next year if you don't feel like Taylor Heineke could ever take the reins. But you already have enough quarterbacks who are competent that you should probably go single high safety here or else you can go a linebacker here. Don't really think it's the right spot. Bears getting Kyle Trask. Don't think that they're going to want to do that. I think they, they have a type with Andy Dalton and Nick Foles, but I think they realize that they're not going to win that way. Um, they're just trying to get a random – they're just trying to look like they're competent, and it's not a fit. So I don't like the Bears going Kyle Trask. If they go uh, Davis Mills, I'd be perfectly fine with that. Tennessee Titans going Andre Sisco. They definitely need the help, but I seriously think Andre Sisco is not that great. So I don't really care how many interceptions someone has because of the fact that um, Desmond King, I believe his name was. No, it's not Desmond King. Uh, the, the guy on the Packers, I'm bugging on his name. I think his name was King. Uh, he had like eight interceptions on a year. And he, I mean, you, it's a different game, the NFL. It's how you do it. I don't give a shit about this. And I've heard some really poor things about Cisco's IQ. So you, there's my, there's my, like my little input right there. Uh, Colts gang, if you have to Melifonwu, you already know me. I, I do that. I do that. So I'm fine with that. I like it. Steelers getting Dickerson. Love it. Love it. You're going on a train here. I like it. Uh, Seahawks getting Quinn Miners. Uh, I like it. I mean, I don't really care if they have guys there. I just still think that Quinn Miners could probably be the center in the squad. I don't know. Because I know that they got a good guy at LSU. I believe Damian Lewis as one of the guards. And they have Gabe Jackson. But, you know, he is uh, – I, I think that Quinn Miners is an excellent player. I think he should probably go center. So, there you go. Uh, Rams getting Chad Surratt. I, I honestly don't think that he, I think he can actually take the role of a John Johnson pretty damn well. So to put him as inside linebacker is kind of stupid because he's pretty cheeks in terms of run. He get, he just gets uh, bullied around and he's an excellent player with great motor, but it's just, I really think that he should be, uh, he should be a strong safety in the box. So I think that he could also play more of a single high, but, I just seriously think that he should be in that John Johnson role, being the commander of that defense. He will definitely step in day one and have a big impact. Uh, Ravens going Jason Owe. That's not going to happen given the fact that he tested out of this world, but he's an excellent prospect in terms of potential. Just I don't think that I see it on the on the uh, field, which this is a round I have. Uh, this is where I have him around graded. So Ravens are getting good value for it, and they don't really need to explain themselves because Jason Owe, I mean – the Ravens can miss on another pass rusher and they'll be perfectly fine. So I like it. Uh, Browns getting Tyson Campbell. I know they're trying to get after Caleb Farley and Tyson Campbell's another really good, really good corner. I just don't think that uh, I just, I don't really get it. Yeah. Cause they have Troy Hill and Denzel Ward and greedy Williams. Just don't think they really need another boundary corner. That's called four boundaries and you don't start four boundaries. A little bit weird for me. Uh, Saints getting Alex Leatherwood. Uh, it's, uh, it's okay. It depends on what quarterback you use. You know, Alex Leatherwood fits a guy who's immobile and that's why the Steelers are really linked to him. But, you know, I don't know what the, I, both of the quarterbacks for the saints are not very immobile. Jameis is, he's Mr. Crab legs. He runs around everywhere and then he throws up a hail Mary ball and it gets either picked or makes one of the best plays ever. And then, uh, 
Taysom Hill is just, he's pure run. So I don't really like this pick at all. But number 61, the Bills go Levi Owuzurike. They definitely need to get someone inside there next to Ed Oliver. You guys have let me know that a lot. And obviously the guys who they have are not that great. So next, the Packers get Talon Wallace. Love that fit. You got to get Aaron Rodgers something. And they're actually having an A-plus draft, in my opinion. Chiefs getting Walker Little. I've heard that the NFL is higher on him than what most of us are, but I can't take a tackle in the first two rounds, especially when he hasn't played in over two years. So that's where you'll hear um, me have a bit of hesitation there. But we all knew that Walker Little had a lot of damn talent. Number 64, the Buccaneers going James Hudson. They're playing with they're playing with house money. I'm telling you, you just get extra linemen. You have depth. How'd they win last year? They had a really good line that was healthy in the playoffs. Your line isn't healthy, and you have a guy who could be starting caliber. That's how you win. So, obviously, I, I think that they kind of oversaw a guy in Dylan Radunes here, but, you know, I, this was obviously one of the worst mock drafts I have seen in a bit. I, I don't think that – I mean, Peter Schrager was probably a bit worse, but – just some of these picks seemed a little bit terrible. And what the hell is that? So um, that's wonderful. But I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys do enjoy. I'll see you on the far side. Peace.